Sure, around 9% odd. Gurmeet Chadda, Managing Partner and Chief Investment Officer at Complete Circle joins us on the show as well. Uh, hi, Gurmeet. Good afternoon. Thanks so much for joining in. Well, you heard what Ekta had to say on strides. Uh, you know, that stock is a bombed out stock, actually. It was nearly around 1,000 rupees. It came down. But as Ekta mentioned, there is some guidance that they're giving. They're talking about reducing debt, a beta number moving to more than 700 crores from around that 430 crores odd. Your view on the stock, if at all, and from the pharma pack, what do you like? So I think the uh, I think the you know the results were very good. I think they surprised the market. Uh, 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 you know, uh, with almost 13, 14 percent growth in top line, uh, U.S. business was almost 500 crores out of 980, 990 odd crores a date. Uh, so and they did well across regulated markets. Also, I think what the, what probably got the street now more uh, positive is the margin guidance. They they are saying that it come back to the 20 percent plus margin. Uh, you know, in in the short to medium term. And currently, they, they ended the year at about 10, 11 percent. So, so I think that's something uh, which, which which is leading to, uh, if I can use that word, uh, re-rating uh, and the movement we have seen uh, uh, in in past few weeks. Uh, uh, we keep we continue to keep back. We uh, we we like uh, uh, you know pharma. I you know it's it's right now three percent of Nifty. Weight is really low, very very underrepresented. Uh, so we are more constructive on 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 you know branded generics as a category. Uh, we we like some hospitals, some niche hospital names also like Rainbow, uh, other than the uh, the integrated hospital names. And for the long run, which is five years plus, we are more interested in the CDMO names. Uh, uh, and we are seeing now bottoming out, playing out that as well. We saw how Newland and and Sinjin did well. I think something similar will happen to the likes of Laurus, TV etc. As we as we move forward, but you know the horizon has to be very long. Uh, okay, uh, oil marketing companies, Gurmeet, stay with us, uh, just coming back to you. But OMCs are making their presence felt today. Uh, HPCL, BPCL are surging, anything between 4 and 5%. Sonal is here uh, to tell us what's going on. Sonal. Uh, well, the fact that the marketing margins, uh, they are making new highs is what's driving oil marketing uh, company stocks this time around. Uh, now, the crude basket uh, is priced at around $110 per barrel, but OMC should recover more than their pre-Ukraine war book values over the next two months, is the word coming in from Morgan Stanley. Uh, they are positive uh, on the likes of IOCL and BPCL. Remember, quarter four was really strong across the board for these oil marketing companies led by the refining segment, but now there is an expectation that the marketing segment will also do really well. Uh, however, despite the moves that we are seeing, multiples are still below the mid-cycle returns. Uh, this is despite the earnings tailwinds that Morgan Stanley is talking about in their marketing segment. Uh, the integrated margins in their marketing segment is at the highest ever level. Uh, this is because despite the fall in crude prices, there has not been any cut in petrol and diesel prices and that has uh, led to higher marketing margins for these companies. And this should help them recover the losses that they saw in quarter three. And quarter three losses were huge, both in the refining and the marketing segment for the companies. Now, even if the oil prices remain above the $80 per barrel mark, there is enough cushion for these companies to make profits in the marketing segment. This will reduce the need for government support budget that they had announced around 30,000 crore rupees for these oil marketing companies. And current crude prices at these levels around $75 a barrel also provides a support for possible cut in petrol and uh, diesel prices to the tune of 2 to 5%. If that doesn't happen, then marketing margins, of course, will remain at elevated levels. And that is the next trigger for uh, this sector in general. All right, uh, uh, Sonal, thanks very much for that. Kurmeet, I have a feeling uh, you're not a fan, right? Oil marketing companies? <laughs> no, uh, Prashant, you, you've got to be tactical here, right? I mean, uh, mm. because there's so much government intervention. And I think I, I think what, uh, you know, Sonal made that point on integrated margins. So not only the GRMs are well, uh, you know, the uh, uh, even on throughput, both the refining as well as uh, marketing volumes have been good. Uh, also, if you see BPCL, for example, this one stock we track more, more for tactical purposes that despite the, the losses and the under recoveries, uh, uh, you know, the net debt only marginally went up 4 5 percent. So the balance sheet probably looks 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 far in better shape. Uh, also, at some point of time, probably, you know, while it's a it's a long wait, at some point of time, there will be some strategic divestment as well, uh, uh, you know, and, and so that's something which is which we keep on the radar. But uh, you got to have a trading view uh, on it, but in the near term, possibly there could be some upside. We saw that in last quarter, almost almost a two three times jump in both EBITDA and PAT for BPCL. I think eleven thousand crores or EBITDA, if my memory serves me right, and almost seven thousand crores PAT. So maybe in the near term, yes, uh, valuations also be increasing. 
Uh, Gurmi, do stay on. Tomorrow is the RBI Monetary Policy, the CNBC TV18 poll, as well as our citizens MPC have unanimously forecasted a no-rate action policy or a pause. But what else could be moving from the MPC? Lata is here with the editor's take. Lata. Well, first up, for the stock markets, I think it is anyway a win-win policy because there is a lot of expectation that the growth forecast, which now stands at 6.5, could be upped because of that extraordinary upside surprise in the fourth quarter GDP. Or inflation forecast could be cut because there is a fall in the uh, lower than expected inflation, which came in April and more likely in May. So for equity market, if both come or one of them come, either ways, it's a win-win. So there are no losers here in this market. But for bond markets, it's a bit nuanced. The bond market is more or less clear that there are no hikes, but they want it a little more concretized in the stance. Last time, the governor clearly said, I'm pausing, but it is not a pivot. A pivot means the next is a cut. But uh, they will want to see whether he says that, reiterates that statement, or whether he tweaks the stance, which is actually we are withdrawing accommodation. If I'm withdrawing accommodation means I'm still likely to hike rates. They want to know whether they will change that. The market is more or less clear it's going to be a long pause, but does he change the language of the stance? Now, even this inflation cut is something the bond markets will watch out for. Uh, you know, the RBI's current uh, inflation forecast for April, May, June is 5.2, but April has already come at 4.7. The expectation is that May also is going to be 4.5 or 4.6. So if they reduce Q1, which they have to arithmetically, the full year also goes down. But if the full year goes down from 5.2 to 5, there won't be much of a Diwali. But if it goes even below that, then that market also will jump a lot. That market has factored in a bit. The bond market, after all, the yield has fallen from something like 7.45 all the way to under 7. So some of it is factored in, but even then, below 5. But one doesn't know whether the RBI with an El Nino worry would do that. The big worry for the bond markets or big ask would be, what does he say on liquidity? You know, they're already puzzled that if you are in a withdrawal of liquidity mode or withdrawal of accommodation mode, why did you ask for exchanging the 2,000 rupee notes? Because that has bought a gush of liquidity. How is that withdrawal of liquidity? It is contradicting. So they would want to also know that RBI is very concerned that liquidity has suddenly become so plentiful. They are doing what is called variable rate reverse repo to pull out the liquidity. Okay, you are unhappy with too much liquidity. Will you be equally unhappy if liquidity becomes very tight? Will you do a CRR cut later on in the year? Would be some questions. I don't expect the governor is going to answer all that because of the uncertainties around. But for the bond market, all the good news is factored in. So, you know, if they cut inflation to five, it's in the price. If the stance is unchanged, they will actually sulk. There are reasons for the market to sulk, bonds to sulk tomorrow, but for equities only to rejoice tomorrow. Okay, all right, Lata, thanks a lot uh, for that. For the time being, though, we'll slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll be joined by Rupin Rajguru of Julius Bear. He'll be joining to give us his view on the market. Stay with us. My journey of insurance and investments began at the same time when I invested in LIC SEEP. In this fast-moving world, SEEP can balance your funds with security and growth. SEEP will take care of the ups and downs of the market and will give you fruitful results so that you enjoy the ride. And when SEEP is with you, you can turn high. LIC's unit-linked insurance plan SEEP offers savings and protection so that you can soar high in your life. LIC, har pal aapke saath. दस साल हर हाल आगरे के पेठे को मदुरई को चखाया है 
नन्ना रखे जयपुर की जूती न्यूयॉर्क को पहनाया है एमेजोन क्लिक करो अभी दाल टाइप करो दूर दाल ना अच्छा ठीक है दूर दाल टाइप करो अस्सी साल की उंगलियों की उंगली पकड़ अब अब सेलेक्ट करो टेक्नोलॉजी पे चलना सिखाया है ऑर्डर करो ऑर्डर दे दिया और कुछ वाह जुबा तुम्हें ऑनलाइन नीचे चलो ऊपर चलो ऊपर चलो टेक्नोलॉजी को मैंने अपनी भाषा में बोलना सिखाया है देखे हैं हर हिस्से के किस्से अलेक्सा टेल अ बेड टाइम स्टोरी आने वाले कल से रोज रोज बतियाया है हर दिल तक पहुंचने का मेरे दिल ने रास्ता बनाया है दस साल में साथ मिलकर कई मंजिल पाई हैं। अभी तो बस पहला कदम बढ़ाया है अपनों ने मिलकर बनाई है अपनी दुकान मैंने 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 अमेजोन बनाया अमेजोन इंडिया की अपनी दुकान Welcome back. Holding above eighteen thousand seven hundred in the Nifty, it's a century. Uh, while the Sensex has gained two hundred and fifty points. Let's talk about Torrent Power. That's the one which is surging in trade after the company signed an MOU with the Maharashtra government for three hydro power projects. The week is here with the details. Well, that's right. You know, the stock is in focus. Uh, now, one of the concerns, you know, whenever you speak about renewable energy, has been storage, and a lot of companies, a lot of analysts have been pointing out to the fact that. Uh, pump storage uh, would be something that'll be very important especially and they were all waiting by for you know the kind of announcement that torrent power has made you also had nhpc make a similar announcement some time ago uh, but what is torrent power done the company has gone ahead and signed an mou with the maharashtra government uh, this is for three pump staged hydro power projects and uh, the total capacity of the you know all of the mous would total up to around 5700 megawatts a uh, capital intensive project you know the capital outlay is almost 27000 crores and the uh, company intends to execute these projects over a period of 5 years now what is important to note is at this point of time it's still an mou we'd be waiting for the letter of award to come and you know what exactly the final details that come in in terms of the opportunity side as far as torrent power is concerned okay thank you very much for that gurmeet do you like torrent power is this a story that you are fond of uh we uh, we have tata power in the portfolio torrent obviously uh, is is part of our reference list and and you know these kind of announcements uh, it would take time to fructify obviously market has reacted positively uh, uh tata power being more integrated player uh, uh, from on traditional energy has a very nice new energy portfolio uh, more than 30% market share in solar uh, uh, panels uh, market leader in uh, uh, ev charging uh, is concerned so Uh, so I think uh, uh, energy overall, I think uh, requirement is also proxy to how the investment cycle plays out and how and the revival of manufacturing which we are seeing. So, so that's something which is in our in in our book. All right, uh, <laughs> that's a uh, uh, torrent for you, Gurmeet. What else is uh, sort of interesting you and your team uh, out there in terms of uh, <clears throat> stocks? Actually, it's that kind of a market once again, right? Where the pace of moves is so large that by the time you look at something and get interested and do your work and homework and come back, uh, you know the price is not where you started at. Uh, but what are you and your team doing? Uh, so, Prashant, this is right. Actually, you know, and, and I am I'm a great fan of that saying that more money is lost waiting for corrections than than actual corrections themselves. and because the price action is so swift that uh, you know best of the gains can come in few trading sessions uh, we we are liking the rural economy now focus you see there's a huge announcement i think one of the largest msp increases uh, in 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 the in the kharif crop whether it is paddy groundnut uh, pulses etc was expected uh, after uh, the karnataka uh, elections and and rural economy being soft so i think with more state elections this year Uh, in run up to general election you will see more focus on rural economy uh, so i think i think hul is due in fmcg in terms of uh, i think the way other stocks have run up uh, whether it's tata consumer or itc and i think hul is due uh, shall we very don't discuss distribution reach india has 11 billion distribution 
outlets, HUL is present in 10 billion. Uh, you know, Dabur is 5 billion, right? Just to give you a comparison. So, and I think if you see last year, they had a 4-5% volume growth and uh, on almost 80% portfolios, they actually gained market share. Uh, so with some volume growth coming back, uh, margins getting better, uh, I understand, you know, the valuations are always expensive for HUL, but I think there's some as far as that is concerned. We are also looking at some of the tractor makers, uh, which are again rural focus, some of agrochemical names. PI Industries again has been a very, very old time favorite, very lucky uh, in terms of being invested in it for, for a little over seven, eight years now. Uh, mm -hmm. So these are the, some of the things which, which we like, which I think, uh, you know, there is more upside. So uh, uh, being a little more uh, uh, rural focused and adding some bit of, you know, a capex flavor to the portfolio. All right, uh, Gurmeet, thanks very much for that. Mangalam had put out a piece, I think, last week uh, mm -hmm. talking.